Drop again. Really? Yeah, most places with a steep hill. Oh, uh, well, here it comes again. Here, the parachute yeah. drop. Yeah, they, they, they are doing it. Yeah, they're just doing a parachute drop now. They're just about to uh, unload. There he goes. There you go. So here we are, episode two of Rigs and Gear. Uh, we're just going to take a walk around the vehicle and we're going to introduce you to the two people who have brought their vehicle for us to walk around. Hi, my name is Sally and... I'm Gary, this is Twister. This is Bonnie and we travel uh, with them and we want to show you around our little home. Which is also our mobile office because we're online tutors. Sally wanted an adventure watching Ben Fogel and some program with the Scotswoman in um, Ethiopia. Ethiopia. So we bought ourselves a 1997 Land Rover Defender ambulance from the rocket site in Doncaster, Jackson's. Um, we've had a lot of work done on it, which I don't really understand because I'm not a mechanic, but I'll walk you around the outside and Sally will walk you around inside, which won't take long. Yeah. So, first thing, notice the colour. Sally's favourite colour is blue, and this is Land Rover Tuscan Blue with Raptor paint. We had our windows changed to have the sliding windows, which is, uh, means we've got ventilation when we want, but we also wanted to have security, so we had these grills made as well, which have got all our family names and dogs on them. So we take them with us wherever we go. This is the fitting for the water, which needs doing up in a minute. And how many litres of water do you have in there, Gary? 60 litres of water, which will do 10 of my showers and one of Sally's. Okay. On the side here, it used to have the Red Cross panels. What we did, we changed those panels, we took them off and we turned them into doors in here. So these bits were voids. So in here I've got my gas connectors. So the gas connects to the LPG tank under here which is filled up at a normal petrol station here. But I can also fit a cylinder on if I'm in a place with no, no, um, no LPG stations. Above here, I've got a compressor, which is for the tires, and also we fitted a pneumatic diff lock. So there's my compressor. So I've got the attachments there for the tires and the switch just switch it through to the diff lock. Now, what is the vehicle? This is a Wolf 130, this yeah? This is a Wolf 130. Pulse ambulance, yeah? Pulse ambulance. It was 24 volts. We've changed it to 12 volts simply because it's easy to get civilian parts in the rest of the world. Our plan is, ultimately, to either drive down to Cape Town or to India. Um, but because of COVID, we are here in Salisbury. And then we're going to do circumnavigate the UK. We put on Goodrich all-terrain tyres. I've put spacers on, some people say you shouldn't, some people say you should. We find that it helps with the ballots because it's quite top heavy this ambulance, but time will tell. We've also put on the high security hinges as well because Land Rover doors can be what easily these? nicked. Are these optimal? Optimal. Optimal. Yeah, optimal there, optimal handles. And we also changed the, the doors from the normal army slidey windows to 
those because it's better insulation. You mean the doors won't fly open? Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, the, the door flew open when we pulled away this morning, actually. <laughs> Under here, we got in, an, an extra intercooler. We put a bigger oil sump on, um, and we've put Coney um, shock absorbers on, and we put heavy duty roll bars, uh, anti roll bars on. We put heavy duty um, brackets on everything, basically. So we've really beefed up. The do, wolf do you chassis. find that the, the suspension you've put on helps with the roll? Is it a stiffer suspension? To be honest, I couldn't tell you what it was like before, so I couldn't tell you it's stiffer, but uh, certainly it's quite comfortable to drive. Of we course. kept we kept the springs, but we put heavy duty shock absorbers yeah. on. Um, while I'm here, one of the most important features as far as we're concerned is that we can climb up onto the roof and drink our beer or gin and tonics. That's one of the big selling features of this. But you also see We've raised the roof to give us much better height so that you can just stand, stand in there very airy. And you'll also see on the top we've got the biggest solar panel we could get, which will drive the fridge, all of the internal electrics, and charge up the vehicle battery if we need now, to. Now, there's a reason for the raised roof, because internally a pulse arm is only 5 foot 5 internally. Yeah, and I'm 6 it's, foot. And there you go, so you, you added another 8 inches on it or something like that. About that, yes. But 8 inches on, so yeah. you can. I mean, I've been in the back of the vehicle, so I know you can stand comfortably in there. Yeah, it's very comfortable inside. <laughs> Ultimately, might want to go up to the Arctic Circle, so we put on a snow cowl just so we don't get blocked up with snow. We put the steps on because it makes it a much more comfortable. Uh, to use. At the moment on the other side I've got a water jerry can. On here I've just got my level, leveling blocks and a um, ground sheet. This is one of our best features which is a, an ostrich wing South African awning 270 degrees. We've got a telescopic ladder in the back which we use for um, pulling it out and putting it back. Dead, dead simple. Uh, where did you get that from? Cause we the... got that from the guy in Sussex. Dara King. Dara King. Dara King and Tough Trek. Tough Trek. So Ostrich Wing, uh, in my experience, is self-standing. Yeah. So you don't need the poles in a light wind. Yeah. You still need them in a heavy wind. But they're, I mean, we use Fox Wings ourselves, but we will be changing to Ostrich right. Wing because they're more, they're, they're, they're stronger. We've also, I've got the poles bungeed onto, onto the top of the roof there. One thing we have done, we didn't fix the awning to the raised roof. Um, the guy who fitted it for us had done it to another ambulance and he found that the differential expansion of aluminium and steel meant that he actually started to rip holes yeah. in that so he's fitted different brackets onto there. Yeah. Another feature here of these, we've got them on both sides, we fit um, uh, basically a high powered aerial for our internet dongle. We've got a Netgear dongle because we both work all the time um, as online tutors, we use that wherever we go, we can get Wi-Fi. And if that's not good enough, I've got a five meter extendable pole on the roof as well, which I can put it right up in the air. And if you look in here, above the cab, in the top of the cab, you'll see a table which comes down, which I use for when I'm teaching. I strap myself in there, bracket the table, and uh, basically spend five hours teaching Pythagoras. And I take it this is just for the loo? This is the loo, this is 240 mains hook up, um, just hooks for the doors when they're open. Um, then if you come round the back here, what we've also got, we've got a reversing camera, or a re rear view camera, but I've also got one of these on each face of the um, ambulance so that we can see from inside every um, aspect of the uh, vehicle when we're parked up. And Sally is just smoothly lowering the old stretcher lift arms. So this makes our outside kitchen. We've got a gas point and a water point here. So stand out here with the awning over and cook to your heart's content. This is what we call the garage. So in here we've got barbecue stuff, tables, chairs, etc. Sally will show you the yeah, rest of the box. stuff inside. So two things about these doors. One, we've got slam locks with a special key which only comes from Italy. Um, so that when you shut the door, it's locked. You have a release from the inside. So 
help you get out if you slam it by accident. We've got the same on the crawl through door. So inside we're secure, nobody can get in. And when we are talking about putting it on a roll on roll off ship or something, that's more secure than a normal lock. The other thing we've done is we've cut these notches in here so that when the doors are shut, we can keep the steps down. So when parked up, we can get in and out without having to put the stair steps up and down every time. A recent addition back here, we put the bicycle rack in, which is actually only used for carrying our grey water tank at the moment. But we've put two 120mm mortar round ammunition boxes on there for low value um, items which you might want occasionally. So charcoal will go in there, there's a windbreak, um, barbecue tools, stuff like that which doesn't take valuable space inside. Um, this is the outlet for the gas heater. So, we had a big debate, diesel gas, diesel gas, I don't know. It's a bit like Brexit, yes, no, yes, no. We have found it's really good, it runs efficiently, it's the same type you get with a caravan. All the controls are dead easy to use inside. Um, and the final bit we've got, we put rails on here, so the table we've got inside will fit here and we can sit outside and use that table if we want to. I think that's it for the outside. Windows? Where did you get the windows from? These are standard caravan windows and these ones came from somebody called Nelly Bird, um, but I can't remember their, their make. But they're actually um, slide up and down windows. And your roof extension, who did that for you? A guy called Paul from Camper House. So the main bit of the roof is obviously the um, bit he cut out and then he's got a foam, plywood and aluminium sandwich which he's made to build the sides up. And on the top, and you'll notice it more when you go in, we've got two marine hatches. So we've got the 90 by 90 hatches for marine scene, um, which are normal deck marine hatches for yachts. You can walk on them, but they just make it really light and airy, dead easy to use, they slide in and out. And it really does lighten up the whole of the inside. And your solar panel? Solar panel, I knew you'd ask, I can't remember the details. So, but how, if you were stationary, how long would that last you for and, and charging? It depends obviously on the weather. Yeah. But on a day like today, it'll just keep us going. Um, the idea is that when we're in the Mediterranean, which is what this is designed for, sort of hot weather, we should be able to keep the fridge running during the day off that whilst everything else is fully charged. So we've always got cold beer, you turn the fridge off at night, start it again in the morning, you're not having to rely on gas or mains electricity. Um, so the, the vehicle will charge the leisure batteries and the solar panel will charge the leisure batteries and the vehicle. So we've got two sources of charging. Yeah. So that's it, I think. Oh, did I tell you, we've got bigger oil pump, sump and the extra intercooler. And your waste tanks, this one, your waste tank here, the waste tank for the uh, toilets around the other the side. Waste tank for the toilets around uh, the other side. It's a conventional. Grey water just off there. I like the idea of having your grey water you can just. Most places somewhere. you don't need it, yeah. but some, if you're on a caravan site, you do need it. Yep. Um, right. Over to Sally. Right, okay, so let's go inside. This is not going to take long to show you around. Right. Okay, so we've got seating here. Uh, we've got a little sort of kind of dining area, work surface, um, I work from here, um, so that's pretty self-explanatory. This is very much caravan style, this table drops down, do you want me to show you? Going down, okay. Yeah, Yep, okay, so it goes like this. That's on a fold in the leg. Yeah, it goes like that. And then we had these cushions made, so like a jigsaw puzzle. That. So that's actually quite good because that makes like two day beds, or I guess if you wanted two single beds, you could. We actually make this into a double bed at night. So this comes across. The guy that did our conversion very cleverly came up with this sort of idea. And then basically these cushions and the corner cushions come in here and we've got a big double bed. The other thing which we found, didn't design it this way, but we found that it works, is that you can bring this one across just in the day, position the cushions here and you can really 
just kind of like chill, chill out, yeah, without having to make up the whole of the bed. So that's good there. Um, there's a little pop up uh, table, um, extra working space here. We're actually going to have it moved a bit over so that it, we can get it to come up. Um, the outside is obviously designed for the uh, cooking, but if we are inside, let me just do this. Up. Yeah, you can see why this is going to be. We can actually have this amount of workspace, which is really good. Um, sink cut out in here, it's got various bits and pieces, so that kind of makes a good, good area here. So I'll just put this down. Um, and locker space. Surprisingly, quite a lot. We've got two kind of main lockers for we kind of have one each um, this this was a bit of a mistake so it is going back to Paul these uh, we don't we shouldn't have had shelves these are going to these three are going to be made into lockers so if we were doing it again we'd have them as lockers right from the word go um, but we're learning about that um, we've got two big lockers down here um, and they go all the way back and they're really good for just general things there's another one here which is kind of electric so we don't tend to put main stuff here but anything that we just want occasionally first aid kits or anything like that so we're really trying to maximize the uh, space in there um, coming through if we've got we've got a gas cooker which I think is not in, in it's, two, it's a two ring one it's we can sit here it can sit here and we've got the uh, one here um, and then we've got a big cupboard in here which is absolutely full but that's like a kitchen cupboard and that goes quite a way back one thing that we're having done tomorrow is a drawer fitted in there and we think that'll be really useful so that was another thing um, full-size fridge almost yeah okay so it's a it's got a little freezer box but it's got more than enough space of what we need um right and then we have three lockers here so we've got a little shelf here really really useful and then um Secret cover hill. yeah <laughs> and we worked out that we needed a gliding thing because it goes all the way it's uh, it's across the the cab so it goes a long way back um so we just made this kind of pull out thing. So that's fantastic, got loads of storage space there. Um, similar sort of one that goes back in there. This is our kitchen cupboard. And if you come into, this is the bathroom. So we've got a shower, got a loo, uh, the door comes around here, and then mirror on there, really useful. And then in here is another storage one. And we found that if we put the bedding in there, that's easiest for making up the bed. A uh, little shelf here. You've got the controls. Oh, yeah. oh yes, do you want to come and talk about these controls oh, here? <laughs> well, we wanted a laugh. <laughs> okay, so we've got the. Hold oh, on, you turn that off. Is that on? No, it's not. Yes, it is. Why is that not working? Ah, there, you go. there you go. So we got our 360 degree camera system. We got the solenoid and gas sensor there, so we can see how much gas we've got. This is our normal caravan heating system, and then we got various lights for the bathroom and various lights, which you can't see in this daylight. But we got variable spotlights for reading. We've got strip lights and we've got plinth lights so really nice and cozy you've got the controls to see your vehicle battery charge your leisure battery charge and your water tank level uh, we've got awning light for outside so our battery management system is victron it's all under here and so you can see the victron down there oh, we've got two leisure batteries and all of the other gubbins. Some first aid bits. And that's basically that, I think. 
Um, there's that which slides out, which makes a U-shaped seat as well if you want to have a backrest. So we can do that, and actually we can have the bed going that way Head if rest. we wanted to. Yeah, um, or just just sitting there looking out. But the wildebeest. And the other thing is, you're travelling with two dogs, aren't you? So tell us about the dogs. Yeah. Oh yes, we got the front cab and that. First of all, we got midgenets done as well from when we go up to Scotland. So we had those made by the guy who did the upholstery. I'll do that. Okay. If you want to talk through the dog's bed, but. Okay. Right. Um. <laughs> right. What we do to maximise the space because we've got two large golden doodles, so they're quite big dogs, um, is that we have a. Um, some plywood that uh, is just basically a standard bit which the things cut out that gets put and sits very casually as it were across the two seats we've got some dog beds that were uh, made they sit on top and then a six pound duvet from Asda put them in and the, the dogs sleep in there each night and they just hop in and they are so happy and that's great, we've got um, about 25% more space for us to be living in. So, yes, two big dogs. So a couple of things we've done in the cab here. We've put the winter lining mats in here to add insulation and waterproofing. We've taken some old seats from a Range Rover, which are a bit more comfortable than Army Standard. We've got a table up here, which I use for tutoring with a small light up there as well. And brackets down in the floor well there which fit a bracket which is here which fits into there we've also put in a 240 volt running off the inverter which is enough to power a laptop so that we can work in here without the laptop going flat I've got a bow saw here for picking up my firewood for when we're wild camping We've got an Acuri sat-nav system which you can set for the size of the vehicle. It will also pick up the internet and it's got various other apps in there but I'm too old to understand all of those. Um, we've got an Optimil removable steering wheel so that when we do park up we've got the small steering wheel so we can put it in a backpack and we've also got this hub up here which we can put onto there so anybody tries to put a, a spanner on there to steer it that one will just spin round and prevent that happening. We've also got a clutch lock down here as well which we always put on to so anybody wants to try and steal it they can't change gear and that is the inside of the cab.